Brother, I had uh, let him know during the week, so he asked how my brother was doing, and I told him it didn't look good. And he says, okay, he says, you go. He goes, and give him, give your brother to St. Charlotte. He says, and then don't worry. And I said, I know, Abuna. You know, I was uh, very emotional, of course. Um, and uh, that's easier said than done sometimes. But that's what I did. I took the, the advice of, uh, of my pastor, who uh, gave me the confidence. Of, he spoke with such confidence, and that's, I needed that. And so I came, I lit a candle, I sat here, and I cried tears, I prayed, um, and then I came over and, uh, and I took two of the uh, holy oil uh, bags with the, the cotton swab, and I went home and shared with my wife what I had done. Uh, so we prayed, uh, we went into Holy Week, and this whole time I still had felt like I needed to do something, like I had for myself, selfishly. I, had, I know I couldn't go visit my brother, but I needed to be close. So my wife uh, said if I would wait till Good Friday, when she was off from work, that she would go with me. So we drove to California on Good Friday. Um, and all I wanted to do was to go to the hospital, to be close to my brother physically, and to pray. And I knew my prayers. Uh, I could pray from here. Uh, I know there, uh, there's no miles in between that can stop the power of prayer. But I felt like I needed to do something. Um, so at 9 o'clock at night, we parked um, across in an empty parking lot in front of the, the hospital. And there's a beautiful statue of Our Lady in the parking lot, and it gave me hope. Uh, it was beautiful to see the, the, the Catholic faith in our um, being expressed in, in this building. Um, but we weren't allowed to be on the premises uh, because of uh, the virus, and there were no visitors. All the doors were locked. Uh, so I, uh, as we parked, my wife said, you know, before we, we pray this rosary, why don't we, uh, why don't you call and get an update? And mind you, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't uh, done that myself. Everything had come through my sister-in-law. But I thought since I was there at the hospital that I would call. Uh, so I called for an update, spoke to the, the nurse uh, in the ICU unit, and uh, she uh, put me on hold while she went to get my brother's nurse. Um, as she got back on the phone, she said, your, brother, uh, your brother's nurse uh, is about to go in. She says that she can give you an update now, or you can wait on 30 minutes, and she can give you a more current update. And for these two weeks, nothing had changed. We were at 80% on the ventilator. Um, they had started dialysis. Um, nothing, nothing had, had changed, but we were taking that as being, um, that at least he was stable. And even though he couldn't breathe on his own and was in a comatose, uh, in, induced coma, coma state. Um, so we waited. We waited for the nurse to call back. And about 15 minutes uh, after that, my, my wife said, uh, I don't know if we should wait. Why don't we begin praying? And uh, I watched the security guards walk by and they looked at us. And I thought they were going to make us leave. So I said, well, I'm going to go pray. Start praying by the door. If they call, call me back. And she said, okay. As I was getting ready to get out, my sister-in-law called me. And she said, David, I called to get an update. But uh, they said that Eli, is, my brother's name is Eli, and that his, his nurse has, is in the, in the room with him. And that the brother had called, which is me. She said, I didn't know you had called, and I apologize for that. I did, I apologize. And she said, it's okay. It's your brother. Um, she said, but I'll call you and I'll relay the information as soon as we get the update. That way she doesn't have to call us both back. And I said, okay. So I sat back in the car and I waited. And um, as the security guards passed the second time, I said, I'm going to go now. I'm going to start the prayer at the front door because my prayer was at the emergency where they took him in. I would pray at the front door that that, that, that prayer would manifest him to walk out those doors one day. And as I was getting ready to get out of the car, my wife, out of her purse, pulled the uh, holy oil swabs that I had brought home. And I didn't know she had brought them with her. With her, and she said, "Here, babe." She says, "Maybe you can use these." And I said, I, "What should I do?" She says, "I don't know. Maybe leave it at the front door at the planter." And I said, "Okay, that's what I'll do." So I got out, and as I was walking to the door. Um, I just felt the spirit move me to take the, the swab 
out of the baggie. And as I got to the door, the big glass doors, two of them, I just, without thinking, I just began to pray and I, and I made a sign of the cross, a good four feet, big sign of the cross with, with the oil, the holy oil on the door on this one and on this one. And I prayed. I said, Lord, you raised Lazarus from the dead. If you want, you can, you can allow my brother to walk through those doors. And I prayed for this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit through the intercession of St. Charbel. I prayed that this would be your will, Lord. And then I turned and I walked quickly to, to my car. And as I got in the car, my wife looked at me and she said, did you just anoint the doors of the hospital? And I said, I guess I did. She said, can you do that? I said, I don't know. And I cried. 20 minutes after I did that, we had begun the road, praying the rosary. And my sister-in-law called me. And mind you, she didn't know that we were outside. She called me. And she said, David, she said, the nurse just called me from the room. And she said that your brother, Eli, has a sore on his left leg, probably from laying in the bed for two weeks. Uh, so they were going to rotate him and move him into a different position. She said, and as they, as they began to work on him, he sat up. She said, he sat up, and he said no, not to move him. And they uh, uh, fully sedated, hadn't moved in two weeks, sat up and began to communicate with them. And they said, Mr. Portugal, we need you to, to sit. And, and he said, no. And are you not comfortable? And he said, no. Would you like us to move you? Yes. Whatever the communication was, she was he was communicating with them. And my sister-in-law said, he's giving them heck in there. She, and I said, well, that's good though, right? And then she said, no, it's good. He's awake. I said, is this possible? And she said, I guess. She said, but the nurse wanted me to know that, that through the sedation and all, he was, he was awake. And I said, praise God, praise God. And uh, she says, I'll, I'll call you back. And I said, okay. So we finished the rosary, um, uh, left joyfully with, this is the first good news we've had in two weeks. And as uh, that night, as we were going to sleep, my wife said, honey, did you understand the time of, of your brother sitting up? And I said, what do you mean? She said, it was right after you went out and put the, the holy oil on the doors. And I thought about it, I hadn't even, I had, again, so many things going on. I said, oh my Lord, that's, that is when it happened. That's when it happened. Uh, holy Saturday, uh, they began to take the, uh, uh, the ventilator down to 60%. He was breathing 40% on, on his own. Uh, Sunday, down to 35. And I believe by Monday, they began to take the sedation, on uh, Tuesday, the sedation down. And got him, the goal was to get him off sedation. But at the end of that night, he was completely off sedation and completely off the ventilator. So he's, uh, he's breathing on his own. Uh, he's got some a long way still, a long journey. As we know with this virus, it's not like anything else. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. But um, I, I, I called him, I texted Buddha, call me, I have to tell you, and I, and I told him, and I don't know how I got through with it, with, with the tears of joy. Um, and I thanked him. I thanked him for the, the gift of introducing me to this wonderful community, but especially to the, the life of St. Charles. Um, I told him as before we hung up that I came to work with the youth here um, feeling that I had something to offer and I, and I know the Lord has given me a gift and I love you uh, the youth if you're, if you're watching I hope you're, you're here um, but I didn't realize I thought I was coming to give and this wonderful community um, God has shown me uh, a different power of prayer and love and faith. And Abuna said that God willed this because he knew that that I would I would go and tell and I would tell the young people because of, of, of the faith. And, and I believe that. And that's what I, I plan to do.
So I thank you all for your, uh, your, your time. Uh, I would ask for your prayers, your continued prayers for my family, for all those that are, that are struggling through this, this time. Thank you so much. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, as you know, all our life is about faith. If you have a strong faith, faith with love, with forgiveness, with belief, God will answer our prayers. Abna Abu Ayyah, Man Yusuf Al Ahadda, Rayyidkum Mushtaatkum, Nahna Anna Hayatan. شيء بيتم هذا عم يصير عنا بكنيستنا يعني طبق المثل بيقول الكنيسة الأيدي صارت تشفي نحن بنشكر ربنا حقيقة على النعم اللي عم بيعطينا إياها بالحياة كل أنواعنا نعمة المحبة نعمة السلام نعمة الغفران نعمة المسامحة نعمة الصدق نعمة الالتزام أو النعم ربنا أعطانا إياه من الحياة بس بذات الوقت كل إنسان بيمرق بمحن والأرضاي هو يلي بيسكن للمنتهى اللي بيسكن للمنتهى هو اللي بيخلص مثل ما قال متى بإنجيله من صبر إلى المنتهى يخلص أبناء الرعية صلاتنا كلنا سوا بقالكم مطرح ما تنتوا بيجوا صلاتنا لربنا لأنه نحن بنشكرك على كل شيء عم تعطينا إياه بحياتنا ونطلب منا خصوصا من الفترة الحلوة اللي عم تخلينا نقضي وقت أكثر وأكثر مع عيالنا ومع بعضنا البعض عم تخلينا نصلي أكثر عم تخلينا نكتشف معنيك الحقيقية أكثر ونشكرك على النعمة اللي عم تعطينا إياها نحن حقيقة ربنا منيح معنا نشكر على كل شيء God is good to us and we thank him God bless all of you God bless you David as you said and I'm going to confirm it you have a mission with the youth as you know our youth needs faith and belief and that's your mission my mission you came here last year after turning a phone call to find a person to run my youth. And I find you, you find me. Now you're stuck with us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of you.